Jay here from Stratford Panic. This is it. This is the big one. Manchester United travelling to Galatasaray in the Champions League. Joining me, as always, is my good friend, Joe Smith. Joe, mm. just before we get into the fact that this is yet another must-win game, first things first, yeah, obviously, of course. if you're watching this, get your phones out, film yourself 30 seconds in landscape and send it to paddockmatchday at gmail.com. And what am I sending, I hear you ask? You're sending a score prediction. We want your score predictions so we can use them as part of our pre-match build-up for the watch-along. And we'll be here for that watch-along as well. So make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on it. Anyway, must win. Hmm. I feel like we say this every week, but it pretty much li literally is a must-win game if we want to progress in the Champions League. We've got, I don't think we've got a chance if we don't win this one. And yet... And yet... We still could. No, yes. surely not. I would, yeah, surely right. we have to so, win two games out of our first five or whatever it is. No, no. So, we're on three points. That's, Galatasaray, yeah. Copenhagen, both on four. Right. Bayern Munich on 12. Right? Okay. So let's say we lose tomorrow. Yeah. So you'd be all bothered. I wouldn't give a shit. Or on Wednesday, yeah. And I'll tell you why. Yeah. Yeah, let's say we lose tomorrow and Wednesday. Okay, yeah. Right? Bayern Munich beat Copenhagen. Fingers crossed. Right, They okay. stay on four points. Yeah. Galatasaray, move up. Wait. Right. Oh, no. So how are you, what, how are you working this maths out? We here? draw. Right. So Galatasaray on five. We're on three. Yeah. Copenhagen have just been beaten off by Munich. Oh, no. we're, they're on five. We're on four. Copenhagen yeah. on four. Yeah. Last game of the season, of the week, yeah. of the year. Yeah. Copenhagen and Galatasaray draw once more. Yeah. We go ahead, beat Bayern. We go through in second place. We have to not lose. Would we go through in second place, though? Because if, if Galatasaray yeah. mm -hmm. draw with Copenhagen... We'd be on seven points. They'd be on five. All right, and right, and okay, five and six respectively. Right, so we can draw. We just can't lose. Yeah, right. It's that simple, Jay. I, I mean, can't it's a must this. win. By any other name, it is a must win, and it re really. Part of me actually that wants point. that to happen because it'd be insane to go yeah. through on seven points. Yeah, um, it's a must win because that isn't going to happen exactly like that, is it? No. Um, so. I'm nervous. It's a horrible place to go. We're relying on other results pretty much at this point because if, if Copenhagen win their last two games, we're out anyway. So it doesn't really matter. It's, it's not in our hands. But I do, I do think Bayern will do as a favour. And I, at some point, if you want the season to turn around, you just have to start winning these games. You can't always sneak through on a technicality. I'm sort of messing about at the start there about how we could and they draw and we beat. But really, that can't be how you get through you know, cups. You can't do that. If you want to no. actually be any good, you have to start winning. And Galatasaray are a good team. They're a bit scary away from home. We all know this. But you've, you still just beat them anyway, don't you? You yeah, just beat yeah. them. You have to beat them. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, I think, uh, look, also as well, it's a, a bit of a weird one in the Champions League because on paper, you look at that and you go, what, one win out of four, that's awful. Losing to, to Copenhagen or losing to Galatasaray at home is, you know, isn't great. And obviously the Bayern Munich game was a pretty poor performance as well. But there have been some positives during those games. Like I felt we were very unlucky against Copenhagen. And yeah. I, I don't care. It wasn't a red card. And if it's not given us a red card, we win that game by at least 3-0. Yeah. I just We were so comfortable in that game. Galatasaray... Andre Onana had the worst game of his career. Yeah. Like, he, he's never been that bad. I've never seen or heard of him being that bad. And he's not been that bad since. He just completely lost his head. And that cost us. So, it has been a little bit of, you know... Slightly strange. Slightly strange. Slightly unlucky. Slightly, you know, misleading the fact that not everything has gone our way. But, like you say, we're still in it. Um, if we are going to get anything out of this game, then yeah. a group of people who may have a big say in it are the younger players. We mm. know we've got no Marcus Rashford because he's suspended for the red card that I mentioned earlier. Alejandro Garacho, who scored an absolute worldie mm. against Everton, could have a big part to play. Kobe Mainu is another one who had a very good game against Everton as well. I just want to talk about Garacho because we can get into whether Kobe Mainu is going to play yeah. in a minute. But you'd expect Garacho to play with, with, with no Rashford. Yeah. It's a given. Rashford suspended, like you said. It's got to be him. Who else, What are you going to do? Palistri and Anthony. We don't even know if Anthony's fit. Exactly. He, he, he got a knock in training. So Garnacho is guaranteed to star. I I, obviously, one of the best goals I've ever seen. Genuinely not, you know, that's not hyperbole. It's just a 10 out of 10 perfect goal against um, Everton. But I think the rest of his game still leaves a little bit to be desired at times. I think... He still needs to do more consistently, I think, keeping the ball. Um, sometimes he's a little bit wasteful in the final third. But when you're a youngster, that's how you play. 
you're not the, the finished article. So I hope that he can have one of his games where he's just terrorising the defenders um, and, and hopefully setting stuff up for Hoyland if he's back uh, or Marshall if not. But he's, he's a very exciting player. And the fact that he's even capable of the sort of goal he scored against Everton shows you that there's talent there that most players don't have. Most players can't physically get themselves into that position to score that goal, let alone execute it in the second minute of a game of, of a, in front of a rowdy crowd at Goodison Park. He's a fantastic player. I just want to see him push on and control games more, look at a consistent threat throughout games rather than you know these bits and bobs. But that's what you get with youngsters, isn't it? It is, and also I feel a little bit sorry for him because the, the environment that he's been thrust into isn't perfect for a youngster no. because he's coming into a team that's very erratic anyway he's gone from last season mainly being used in cameos and coming off the bench and doing very well to starting quite a few games this season and yep. the added pressure with that some of his teammates aren't exactly firing on all cylinders which doesn't help you when you're a youngster if you look at say for example and I hate using an example but City the way they handle Phil Foden gradually minutes here coming into a team that's winning every game Ganacho is coming into a team that isn't winning every game and there is an expectation that he's got to be one of our main sort of attacking threats yeah. so I think he's done well I understand your point of view though but hopefully we can see the very best out of Garnacho for many many years to come let's talk about predicted 11s then we yeah. mentioned Kobe Mainu. um We'll, talk, we'll start with your yeah. predicted 11. Talk us through it and you're thinking, this is what who you expect Eric Ten Hag to pick. Yeah, I, I don't know if Luke Shaw is going to be physically capable of playing two games in three days. And presumably that. what it would actually be would be three games in seven days. Yeah. We've got Newcastle at the weekend <gasps> as well. Um, and he needs to start that game. So I've gone with um, that back four. Again, you know, Victor Lindelof, I think he's a good player. Thought he was okay against Everton. We saw his weaknesses at times with the physicality of um, Carver-Lewin. But, you know, Varane's got to play some time. He's a good player, especially in the Champions League. He knows Champions what he's League doing. Varane. He's fantastic in cup competitions. He's a very good player. There's a falling out there or something's gone on there. So maybe he won't start, but I think he will. Um, and I've gone Dallin wan Bissaka just to give Luke Shaw a bit of a rest. Um, midfield three, I don't see why you change it. I don't, you know, there's no real option other than um, Amrabat really off the bench. So who do you take out for Amrabat? I, d I don't think it'd be fair to take Mainu out. Um, and he's had actually, you know, he's been back to fitness for a few weeks. He's played behind closed doors games. He's played under 18, under 18s games. So I think he's got a little bit more in the tank maybe than a Luke Shaw. Um, and after that performance against Everton, why would you not play him? Uh, he also got 20 minute rest, didn't he? Because he came off in the 70th minute. And then that front three, I'm hoping that Hoyland is fit. It was a late fitness check against Everton. He's had four days since then, or three days, full days since then. I'm hopeful that, you know, if he was close, then he should be available now. And I think we need him as well. He's a top scorer in the competition, always looks dangerous, is a handful to play against. And let's get Garnacho and Anthony whipping balls on him. Yeah, we don't. I don't know what the situation with Anthony was. He just unavailable the, the other yeah, day. I don't again, know how we serious don't know. that. So yeah. if if there is an update, if not Palistri. Yeah, Anthony. if there is an update, then we'll we'll obviously you know that's why we've not gone with that because yeah. the update came after we've recorded this. Um, I understand what you're saying there. My team is a l quite similar. Yeah. I've gone Sergio Regulon okay. for the, the 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 same reason you have. I don't think Luke Shaw can play. Um, two games or three games in seven days or whatever it's going to be the re I've actually got Amrabat Sofian Amrabat for Kobe Mainu okay. and the reason I've done that is I understand your point yeah he did take him off with 20 minutes ago and he has played behind the closed doors but playing it in the, against men in the Premier League and stuff like that and when you've not played a lot of football yeah. over the last few months he's barely played mm -hmm. I think it might be a bit of an ask for him to play two games in four days or whatever it is yeah. I think, and I think he will play against Newcastle I think the other question for me is whether he plays Everton Galatasaray Newcastle or just Everton and yeah. Newcastle I don't see him missing the Premier, the, the game, Premier League game against Newcastle I just don't and I think Amrabat can do a job against Galatasaray um, in terms of the front three I agree what you say I think if Anthony isn't available which I'm not sure yeah. he will be I've gone with Palestri but I if agree. Anthony is available I think Anthony will start because I think it's a, a game that he can try and redeem himself if that's the right yeah. word uh, we'll talk quickly about Galatasaray obviously we know what they can do we saw it at Old Trafford They've, they've got a few familiar faces in there. Most of all, Wilfred Zaha, who caused us all sorts of problems. Also, they've got uh, Icardi as well. He's a, you know, a player that everyone knows and he's a very talented player. And again, we saw what he can do too. Yeah. What do you make of Galatasaray? Were you a bit surprised about Old Trafford? Or do you think we kind of knew that they've got these players <clears> who can <throat> score goals and we should have been a bit better? I, I, looking back at that game, I, I don't think they were fantastic. I thought no. they, they were dangerous in spells. Zaha's goal was a deserved goal and it was poor. Was it Lindelof who got sort of 
Dallow, Dallow, Dallow. Dallow. It was it was a comedy of errors, wasn't it? Was it Mount who didn't do get involved, and then yeah. then I think did it or was that the different? I can't remember the old molding so on it. I might even get it completely wrong. I sort of, do remember it was Dallow. Yeah. Was it a bit of switching off? The ball got kind of as the, per. I'm thinking of lately. the other goal. I think the ball got caught sort of under his feet, and he was kind of rolling over with it, and Zaha ended up with it, and it was just this sort of strange set of circumstances. I think we're a better team than they are. Ricard is obviously very dangerous. 21 goals and assists in 21 games for him um, since he arrived there. He's obviously been fantastic. Um, he's got 52 goals and assists in 47 games. He's too good for him, really. And he's, talent-wise, he always has been. It's just these attitude and these bits and bobs come up off the pitch that sort of takes his career down a notch every time he makes a move. But he's a fantastic player when he's on form. I just think we'll be too good for him. Zaha, one to watch, obviously, but... I, I, I think United, so far, we saw against Everton, we've seen a little bit of a, a fight in big games recently, which we haven't had this season. And hopefully we can sort of take this to another notch because the Newcastle game is going to be a big one. We've got Liverpool very soon as well. We need to start rising to occasions rather than crumbling under them. So I think it's going to be really tight. And Galatasaray, obviously, we've been through a few, a few of their bits there, top of the league as well. I just think, you know, we'll have too much room. With all that being said, then, yeah. give us your score prediction quickly. I'm going to go for another clean sheet. I think I'm just going to go 1 0. I think it's going to be horrible. 1 0. Really hairy, horrible, nervy game. We'll be here for the watch along, obviously. Just nail biting, all the cliches, all the, all the phrases. Just a horrible game to watch. One where you're just glad it's over. But I do think we'll get three points. 1 0. And I'm going to go Scott McTominay with the goal. Scott McTominay with the goal. He's yeah. going 1 0. I'm going to go 2 1 to Manchester United. Get your phones out, film yourself 30 seconds in landscape, and send your predictions to paddockmatchday at gmail.com. That's been Joe Smith. I've been Jay Motty. This has been a preview for yet another must win game against Galatasaray in the Champions League. Don't forget to hit like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.